today we look at what numbers could be thrown at Duncan Robinson this offseason. If you haven't yet, please share and subscribe to help grow the channel. And I hope you enjoy the video. Today's video is powered by SeatGeek. Get $20 off any tickets sold using promo code AntWright on the SeatGeek app or website. We all know the story of Duncan Robinson by now. Little known recruit goes to a D3 school, transfers into Michigan on scholarship, becomes an important piece to the team's success as one of the best shooters in the Big Ten, winning conference tournament championships, going to a Final Four, national title game. But after college basketball, he wasn't sure what he was going to get into, whether it's going to be sports talk media or maybe playing overseas. At this point, he's getting ready to play in the annual TBT, the basketball tournament, he gets a call to participate in the Miami Heat Summer League and he shined, earning a two-way contract within two weeks of Summer League starting. He was back and forth between G League and the NBA his first year, playing 15 NBA games and shooting the lights out at the G League level. That summer, he was signed to a standard NBA contract that went on for two years. In that time, 140 starts and 145 regular season games, 25 playoff games, all starts. In the NBA Finals, the Heat lost in six games to the Lakers. And for the Heat, Duncan Robinson was the third highest scorer, had the third most steals and third most assists. His worth to the Heat and to the league has already been proven. Just look at these quotes after a loss to the Jazz. They're trying to take Duncan out of the game, Bam Adebayo said. The stuff we were doing with Duncan last year, we can't do this year. Teams have adjusted to stopping Duncan all season long. If he's getting this type of attention, what star player wouldn't love a player like that alongside them? Either way, he's been working on a major discount. His contract is up, and the best way to see what type of numbers that could be thrown his way is by examining some recent signings in 2020 by similar players. These numbers were based off of last season before these guys signed their contracts just to get an idea uh, how this compares to Duncan. So in 2020, Davis Breton signed with the Wizards. He was 27 years old, a bigger forward at 6'10", making 3.7 threes per game, while threes made up for 77% of his shot attempts. When he signed, it was for five years, $80 million, an average of $16 million per year. Bodan Bodanovic signed with the Hawks in 2020. He was also 27 years old, 6'7 wing, making 2.7 threes per game, while threes made up for 57% of his shot attempts. When he signed, it was for four years, 72 million, an average of 18 million per year. Lastly, Joe Harris signed with the Nets in 2020. He was 28 years old when he signed, a 6'6 guard wing, he made 2.5 threes per game, while threes made up for 51% of his shot attempts. When Harris signed, it was for four years, $75 million, an average of $18.75 million per year. Elite shooting is a high commodity with how much spacing there is in today's NBA. And now at 27 years old, Duncan is 6'8", made 3.5 threes per game, while 85% of his shot attempts come from three. In my opinion, the Heat are going to shell out what it takes to keep him. Based on what people are saying, it's between 15 and 20 million per year. And if we base it on Bertans with Bodanovic and Harris, he's looking at four or five years, anywhere between 70 and 82 million dollars. In my opinion, if he wants more per year in the 17 to 20 million dollar range, a four year contract makes the most sense. If he gets less per year in the 15, 16 million dollar range, a five year contract would make the most sense for both parties. As a restricted free agent, it's not a guarantee he'll be back with the Miami Heat. He's literally come out and said, first and foremost, a fit when referencing free agency. The Miami Heat had prioritized him in the offense, not only using him as a spot up, but coming off handoffs and incorporating multiple concepts for him to get the team going. He'll have his options in free agency. He can go to a bad team like the Houston Rockets, who had 17 wins this year, who loved to shoot the three almost to a fault. They were ranked second in the NBA in frequency of three-point shot attempts, while 28th in percentage. So they were chugging up a lot of bricks. Or he can entertain a playoff team like the Memphis Grizzlies, who need a big-time wing shooter. To compliment their guys like John Morant, Dylan Brooks, Jaron Jackson Jr., they have guys who can create, but none of their guys shot more than six threes per game. And as a whole, they were 27th in three-point frequency per game this year. They need a shooter badly, whether it's Duncan or going into the draft and getting someone like Corey Kispert. Or... 
He could choose a team with potential who should be contending for a playoff seed next year like the Pelicans. They need elite shooting around Brandon Ingram, Zion, Lonzo, and Bledsoe. They had the 28th lowest three-point frequency. When they did shoot it, they were 26th in three-point percentage. Let me know below in the comments which team should be going after Duncan. Either way, he earned all of this. It's a great story. He just needs to take care of his health between now and when it's time to sign. Can't guard me.